guys, just when you think Sweet Baby Ink has reached the bottom of the lows, they get worse. And now an employee or someone who worked for Sweet Baby Ink, she has just blatantly, unabashedly said that at her game development company that she works with, they don't hire white people because it's a safe space. Apparently, being around white people isn't a safe space. Uh, let's just dive into this video. So first, here it is confirmation that she did work for Sweet Baby Inc. by Grumps here. He said, of course, she worked for Sweet Baby Inc. Just verified it with a Google search. The ride never ends. So here we have Libs of TikTok who... Uh, found this and posted it uh libs of tiktok says this is danny lalanders a non-binary non-binary i am so sick of this made-up gender crap a non-binary game developer she was hired by cliffhanger devs to create a game based on marvel's black panther okay so I want to say she's like narrative lead or something, um, or she's working on the narrative team. Uh, she says she doesn't hire white people because they're unsafe and it's hard to work with them and only hires people of color. <sighs> it sounds bad. Well, it gets worse when you hear her own mouth talk. All right, here we go. I have a team of 21 right now uh, for Validate. It's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team for indie games. But who is your team? Validate has a team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. Oh, so if a team... <laughs> No white people. That's a safe environment. No white people. Okay. Why isn't Chicago safe? Huh? <laughs> and I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Mm hmm. That's not narcissistic or anything. That's just, I, I can't even comprehend. Like, if I were hired to be some narrative lead for Tomb Raider or something, which obviously would never happen because I don't have the right way of thinking. I, I have too much wrong think to ever be brought on a project like that. But hypothetically speaking, if that were the case, and I were to think, hmm, who do I want on my team? Race wouldn't even cross my mind. It would be, oh, uh, I want people who are Tomb Raider fans who understand classic Lara Croft, who understand the, how the game works, who understand Lara Croft's backstory, who uh, have a grasp on the character and the, the and mythology based around wherever we want her to travel, things like that. It would not even, I wouldn't think, oh, I'm going to feel safe if I'm around white and native mixed people like that's the only people I can be around white and native mixed or white or native that's it like that makes no sense to me this is bogus okay um and I'm not saying that white people in the industry are creating safe unsafe environments I'm not yeah, apparently that. That not you are I'm saying. I'm saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something may be okay, but it was really a microaggression. Ha! A microaggression. What is this said microaggression? Hey, girl, your hair looks great today. That's probably it. Because that's what these woke people consider microaggressions right now. And no one wants to deal with that while they're trying to make a game that they love. I would oh my gosh. So... Naturally, this has made a lot of waves. 4.7 million views. Um, We'll see how that works out for them. What is their... Yeah, they're a small team. So uh, then she follows up and says, Hi, EA is not hiring white people because they're hard to work with. Part of your official policy. <laughs> wow. So she's openly racist and should be investigated and charged. Exactly. This is just insanity. Can you imagine if the roles were reversed on this? So this is my policy when it comes to racism and all that kind of stuff. 
if it would be racist for one race to say something, then it's racist for another one to do the same thing about another race. Let's really break down what racism is. Racism is discriminating against people based on the color of their skin, right? So that would be preventing them from getting certain jobs um, or thinking that they are inferior human beings or that they are subhuman or something to that effect. Not, oh, let me make some jokes and laugh about how black people can't swim or white people can't jump or I don't know, whatever it may be, you know, lighthearted jokes or whatever. That is something totally different. But this is a clear case of actual racism. Oh, nope, we don't hire white people. So you're not hiring people because of the color of their skin. And you don't have the self-awareness to see that is the very definition of racist. Oh my goodness. All right. So then uh, we have all that. Oh my gosh. The, the Sweet Baby Ink drama has just caused journalists all around. They are grasping at straws right now, trying their best to defend Sweet Baby Ink and they're failing very badly. Um, so here we have uh, GameDeveloper.com. They made this article and said, why are Valve and Discord permitting harassment against Sweet Baby Inc.? And so then we have Bryant here uh, who says, we reached out to Valve and Discord multiple times to ask how a group using their platform to target a company was within the bounds of their terms of service. No answer back yet. And so now we have the community notes that says Sweet Baby Inc. Detected is a Steam curator that has two options, recommending or not recommending games based upon a listed criteria. The criteria for this group is simply, did Sweet Baby Inc. work on the games? The group has not engaged in targeted harassment, nor is it in violation of terms of service. All right, and this has just reached massive massive levels because now uh here we have the quartering he had um he had grums and he had the oh, hold on he had the actual sweet baby ink curator on there as well the one who made the sweet baby ink uh thing uh what you call it the steam thing <laughs> so elon musk just says wow um, so let's go ahead and play this. That it's not that gamers are. I don't know why this is potato quality. Um, okay, if we're gonna watch this as potatoes together. You know, uh, uh, upset about you know. Oh, hey, we have some diversity in the game. It's actually the way that they go about it with pure tokenism, with phoning in weak characters instead of creating strong new characters. And more importantly, it's about a vindictiveness to destroy the past, to destroy the IP, to ignore the source material, and to tear apart these beloved characters in some sort of fitful rage that we don't understand and is very disingenuous. And I think that is the tremendous reaction to Suicide Squad. And this is going to have an immense uh, financial impact. Uh, the well said. We are sick of it. And people ask me all the time, why don't you like the rebooted Tomb Raiders that much? What's your problem with the rebooted Tomb Raiders? It's not Tomb Raider. That's my problem with it. Did I ever say that the games are inherently bad? No, they're fun. I mean... Not nearly as fun as actual Tomb Raider games, but they're not Tomb Raider. Why are we supposed to be okay with them changing our beloved characters beyond recognition? And not only that, but gameplay as well. This seeps so far beyond just characters because this also goes into accessibility to the mainstream, trying to make it where everybody can play. So you have the classic Tomb Raider games, which are very well known for being difficult games. And 
now they're just these baby down, watered down, way easier games because, oh, we want to make sure everybody can play. Well, when you try to appeal to everybody, you really lose your niche. Um, let's continue. The way games are funded, you don't use your own money, even EA, okay? It, it Games are hugely expensive to make. They're they're upwards of, you know. Okay, I think we got the main point here. If you guys can watch the whole video there, if you want. Um, I did want to point out another tweet that Grum shared because it looks like some of the latest developments are Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia just shut down edits to the Sweet Baby Inc. page. Interesting. Um, and let's see uh, what it says. It says, I've semi-protected this talk page for a week wikipedia talk pages are not a forum to discuss the topic that means that if you have strong feelings about this topic you'll have to find somewhere else to air them okay so basically what this means obviously they're trying to to protect the narrative okay uh they're they don't want the truth out there in often cases when this happens um here we have where they highlighted uh expose the truth <laughs> wow they're really wikipedia we're not here to tell the truth you can't make this up for real like let's see where is that where is oh here it is it says uh wikipedia is one of the very few where you can't wikipedia is not here to right great wrongs or expose the truth you can start a blog if you want to do that okay so why else would you go to wikipedia if I ever go to Wikipedia, it's because I want answers on something. I want to learn about something. I want to research something. Obviously, I want it to be truthful. But in this case, that doesn't seem to be their priority. Um, so we also had another tweet I wanted to highlight as well. Um, so he said, remember when I called out exactly what would happen with Sweet Baby Inc.? We're now on step seven. And so this says the narrative formula Step one, do something terrible and wrong. Step two, which they've done. Uh, step two, with with how they're with everything that they're inserting into these games with our characters that we love, inserting their message and narrative, and not prioritizing the actual gamers and the fans. Um, fans have a problem with it. So number two, they get called out. Number three, get journalist friends to write hit pieces, which has been happening. Step four, paint yourself as the victim, which you're seeing a lot of people who work at Sweet Baby Inc. do such things. Step five, dox the people doing nothing wrong except to point out what you are doing as a warning to other witnesses. Step six, make a bunch of fake incidents to false flag things when you don't have anything real to point to. That one girl that at Sweet Baby Inc. who say, oh, I'm getting all these death threats. I'm getting this, that, and the other and having no proof. Okay, uh, step seven, get Wikipedia to write an entry in your favor using your journalist friends as factual sources. And that is where we're at right now. I am so glad that people are fighting back against this because it has been pure insanity. Um, we've had a lot of other uh, game devs, journalists, stuff like that say things. Here we have Tim. Tamor from GameSpot who says once again asking gamers to grow up which is a subtweet to what's going on with all this and I said get good and use the you have no power here Lord of the Rings meme because that's the thing gamers are rising up right now gamers are taking gaming back you know this is a very daunting overwhelming task to fight back against all of this but hey I think everybody is doing an amazing job I think we need to keep this momentum up. We, uh, yeah, we have the high ground in this case. We're actual gamers because a lot of people who entered the gaming space weren't gamers. They were people like Tamora here who says, oh, grow up. They don't give a crap about video games. And they complain anytime a game is, is they have noticed it's always journalists are like, I wish more games were, I wish games were only like five hours long. I ain't got time for this because they don't care about video games. They don't. Oh, they complain whenever something is too difficult. They can't even get through freaking tutorials. Remember Cuphead? Remember the journalist who couldn't get past the Cuphead tutorial? Or that one journalist trying to play Doom? Doom Eternal? How terrible that was? They don't care about games. And so actual gamers are rising up. 
gamers are used to being outcast. We are used to that. So we ain't scared. Go ahead and tell us we can't be in your club. We don't care. We are used to being rejects. Bring it the heck on. So anyway, there you have it for today's video. Uh, I'm sure a bunch more stuff will continue to unfold with this sweet baby ink crap. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you want to watch me read the Bible, uh, you can do so on my Bible channel at Bible Time with Melanie Mac, And then my streams, which I will be streaming today, uh, Wednesday evening and Thursday, um, on my stream channel on YouTube, Kick and Twitch for now until they ban me again at Melanie Mac. Thank you all again. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Miles Morales.